call this meeting together of March 1st uh, at uh, 6 o'clock. And uh, <clears throat> as everybody is aware, we have lost one of our long-time long -time employees, and uh, the flags were put to half-mask today in, in her honor. It's, uh, it's hard to see people pass that have done a good job in their life. She was uh, definitely a very kind person. She looked after a lot of senior citizens through the years. Just amazing. So tonight, should all be in favor, I will forego the prayer and instead we'll have one minute of silence for Patsy. Thank you very much. Uh, disclosure of pecuniary interest, seeing none. Uh, public meeting, we have none. Uh, announcements, are there any announcements at this point? Councillor McLaughlin. You, you're talking community announcements? Okay, there's uh, a Westmeath Carnival on Saturday. <coughs> Breakfast is uh, at 8 o'clock, I think. Uh, and it's always a dandy. So whoever can make it. Okay. There's also uh, trivia over at the uh, I Hall on Saturday night, or Friday night, I think. Uh, uh, so if anybody was interested. Okay, thank you, Councillor McLaughlin. Anybody else have announcements? Okay. We have no presentations tonight because we don't have people to present them to. <coughs> so, uh, Standing Committee, we don't have anything on Standing Committee and Building and Planning. Community Services. So we'll go to 7.3, community services. Corporate. Yeah, there you go. Oh, I had my eyes uh, checked today and, yep. He recommended I wear my glasses. The first item on the agenda for corporate services is the 2017 budget schedule. Uh, Marsha is not here, so if there's any questions with regards to the budget schedule. Those are all Wednesdays, are they? Could you use your microphone, please? Thank you. March 8th, uh, we have uh, two things on that day. And, uh, the one is for the meeting with JP2G at 10, and is corporate, is our, sorry, budget deliberations that day too, because I have them both on my schedule. I just need to get that cleared. All these uh, meetings would start at 6 p.m. Um, a lot of them are special, so th there's no regular business being dealt with, um, so on the 8th and the 22nd. Uh, we did 
I, we did hope to get the entirety of the budget done in March, but it's just not possible with some of the other changes that are occurring. But the, the goal is to get tax-supported capital to you as soon as possible and then operating, and then move, our, move on in April to um, user pay, so the, the water and sewer rates budgets. Okay, thanks for that. So April 5th, then, it'll be um, the regular committee meeting and council meeting as well as the presentation, okay, and then April 19th, again, on council meeting night. So the only extra night is April 26th in April. And what we'll do is we'll follow up after this meeting with the special meeting notice and make sure that those, those dates are secured in everybody's calendar. Um, the tax supported budget, however, there are a number of kind of extra meetings than we have in March. Okay, uh, looks like uh, Councillor Olmstead. Um, maybe Robert, could you just des um, describe what the difference is? I see the uh, special budget meetings and then a public meeting, and I see that in a couple of phases. Just, just describe the difference here. Generally speaking, our meetings uh, for budget, my understanding in the past, were always open to the public. What this allows is two specific occasions where the, we can hear from the public and they'll be advertised. So if somebody has a comment, we would specifically hear from them in, at that instance, basically just before we pass the budget. So council will do its work, uh, provide feedback to staff, look at the different options, and then we'll have the, if the public wish to speak, provide us feedback they'll have an opportunity to do that um, so we're just including that as part of the process but the the other meetings are open to the public they're all oh, open to okay. the public these are just kind of public meetings in the capital P capital M um, to hear from the public and we'll advertise so if people want to submit comments or come in person they'll be able to do that okay and that's it for corporate services uh, could I have a mover and a seconder for that recommendation? Moved by Councillor Rigier and seconded by Councillor Mackay. That the Corporate Services Committee receive the draft 2017 budget schedule for information purposes. Any further questions? All those in favor? Carried. And that's it for Standing Committee. You're back in the chair, am I? There was, sorry, did you see me? You looked at me, but you didn't say me. <laughs> okay. I guess there was, there was one question that I saw with regards to the insurance, and I understand that uh, there is no insurance required because it is totally private road on private lands and not belonging or will be used as a municipal road. That's 100% correct. Thank you and have a good evening.
I'd just like uh, <coughs> Robert to maybe elaborate what we're, we're going to do. So the classification system just allows us to organize our records in a way that makes sense so we can retrieve uh, stuff um, and also keep records based on the legislative requirement for each of the records. So for instance, financial records we keep for seven years. Other information we only need to keep for one. So right now we don't have a classification system so it makes the organization of our records uh, difficult. Uh, the training component will be um, a three-hour session and we'll do two t to ensure that we continue with uh, service at the counter to train people on the importance of records management, um, confidentiality, privacy information, as well as the new classification scheme so everybody's on the same page. And what um, the information professionals will also help with is just an audit of our current practices. So where we're the, um, we have uh, records in the basement, which is leaky. Is that a good practice or not? Um, what we're doing for electronic records. So the audit will give us a good sense of where we need to go and a roadmap, um, and uh, so we can ensure that we have uh, the program in place to meet the legislative requirements. Uh, Charlie. Is there somebody on staff that's going to be um, doing the legwork? So as part of the changes that you just approved, um, Karen Bromley, who's the Team Assistant for Corporate Services, will kind of be my right-hand lady when it comes to uh, records management. The, um, the legislation refers to the clerk being responsible for ensuring that there's proper measures in place, but Karen will be, um, will be our person. Karen has a background in medical records, which is really a good skill set that we'll draw from. Um, and then her, her sunny disposition will help in ensuring all staff <laughs> do what they need to be doing. Any other questions? <coughs> uh, Councilor McLaughlin. Uh, we, at one point, I thought we were going to take those records that are in down in the basement and have them uh, scanned. I, I think we, we were talking at one point, and I think that's... A, that's something that should be done as well. That basement, we could lose those records quite easily. Certainly. So we're, what we're going to do as part of this is understand all the records and which ones we actually need to keep, the ones that are considered vital records. We also have a vault in Westmeath that we're able to access to protect those really um, important historical ones. But the goal is to only scan those that we really need to scan um, and some it's really not worth scanning. It's not worth the expense or the time. So that's part. That'll be part of the program. Any other questions? For uh, the benefit of the fact that I didn't have my mic on, I'm going to read the motion again. Records management classification training and audit recommendation that Council of the Tr Township of Whitewater Region approves a four thousand five hundred dollars to purchase from the information professionals the Ontario Municipal Records Management System and Associated Services Training and Audit. It was moved by Charlene Jackson, seconded by Kathy Regier, and uh, all those in favour? Carried. <coughs> Rural Economic Development Grant. Recommendation that the Council of the Township of Whitewater Region support the RAD grant application in support of the Community Improvement Plan project. We've got to get a mover. Charlene Jackson, Chris Olmstead second. Any questions? All those in favor? Carried. JP2G Cobden Wastewater Treatment Plant Upgrades Monthly Status Report. Recommendation that the Council of the Township of Whitewater Region approve the invoice submitted by the Project Managers JP2G Consultants Inc. in the amount of 40080 plus HST for the Cobden Wastewater Treatment Plant Upgrades. Any questions? First, I need a mover of Charlene Jackson. Mover? Sure. I had just have a question. Okay, but I'm going to get a mover and seconder first. Okay. Second. Kathy Regan. Okay, now you're on. I, I just can't remember if it was this one that there was an issue with the amount. And I just wanted to make sure that it was okay because we don't have anything on our No, package. that was the time before and we had corrected it. This is the amount for, okay. for the, the period. Yeah. Any other questions? 
Yes. Um, what we're hoping to do with the budget is make sure that the funds have been reviewed by council, the total budget for this project, so that although we can provide you with monthly status updates so you're aware, you've also, you also have a committee with Councillor Mackay as the lead of environmental services and the mayor. Um, so it'll prevent from us having to come every time and, and make sure that there's a total budget amount in the, in the 2017 budget. I was just thinking that I don't know if this is a great idea or not, but we take the overall budget and we, we do a, a diminishing tally, like when we spend and we know where we're, what we have left. Is that a possibility or is that just crazy? I guess it's two ways of looking at it. What we'll make sure is that the budget contains the amount of money we need from a project management standpoint for the project um, and then other phases, so when we go for the design build on the next phase. So that should be before council as part of the broader budget, and then once that's approved, uh, we, we're required to stay within those confines. Okay. Did I real? Oh, got Councilor Jackson. Um, I understand that Marsh is the treasurer is going to re um, report on financial every quarter, so that could be part of that report as well. That sounds good. All those in favor? Carried. Health and Safety Voluntary Audit Recommendation the Council of the Township of Whitewater Region approve the allocation of $6,000 to undertake a voluntary audit of the Health and Safety Program by the Public Service Health and Safety Association, PSHSA, and to authorize the closure of the Municipal Office on March 23rd, 2017 for all staff training and Meeting. Meetings. Can I get a mover? Charlene, Council Jackson, and second by Dave Mackay. Any questions? And I won't put this right over on to uh, Robert. Uh, just there's a slight change in the date that had gone to um, uh, standing committee to the Thursday. Uh, our, as you know, our waste site is open on Wednesday, so this ensures that they can be there. The morning will be health and safety specific, and then the second half will be on departmental objectives and goals um, to match kind of our performance appraisal to get our, our departments thinking about what they need to do to ensure that they're meeting council's strategic objectives, so we're all working in the same way, uh, and other training. Um, and for the morning portion, we'll ensure that there's an invitation to arena staff, the librarians, and other, other people that can benefit from that health and safety training. And with the changes to the staffing, uh, uh, Steve will, will be leading the charge for us on health and safety. We had another incident um, at a fire with a, a, a trip and fall, uh, so it's pretty critical that we get on uh, health and safety, just ensuring that everything is where it needs to be. Um, and that day will be important as well as the audit. So the audit will focus on municipal operations, but also do a, an assessment of fire, and then we'll, we'll at least have a game plan on some of the initiatives we need to, to undertake in short order. Okay, any questions? All right, all those in favor? Carried. 427 Lion Squadron History and Cenotaph Project. Recommendation that Council of the Township of Whitewater Region authorize the 427 Lion Squadron History and Cenotaph Project at Cobden Park with direction to the CAO clerk to prepare an agreement with the project organizers for council's consideration. Can I get a mover? Uh, Councillor Olmstead and second with Kathy Regier. Any questions? Uh, Councillor uh, McLaughlin. Just, can, can you just elaborate a little bit on what, what's going to happen? So by bringing this forward, we can at least um, tell Mr. Lipper that, that they can proceed. I've had conversations with him in terms of some of the things we need to ensure are in place before the project starts, just to understand who's responsible for what. So to confirm that they'll re they're responsible for construction, they're responsible for maintenance and ongoing maintenance of, of the of the cenotaph, as well as insurance, because as you saw from the, the photos, what they're planning is 
is pretty substantial and very much very interesting. So just ensuring that there's insurance so that should anything happen that there's coverage so that this monument can stand the test of time. So what this will do is confirm to them that, that we would like to see this happen and then I will bring forward a, a draft, very simple agreement that would cover our bases and, and discuss that with Mr. Um, with Dale before bringing that back to council. But I wanted to, they want assurances that council is behind this, so this resolution allows that to happen and then we'll follow up with the necessary agreement. Okay. Any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Passed. Notice of motion, none? Minutes. Or just ask sorry. Notice of motion. Oh, sorry, uh, Councillor McLaughlin. Uh, I, I just didn't want to miss this this time. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, I think I brought it up before. I'd like to see the, the makeup of council brought forward before I think we talked about it and uh, Robert said it had to be done by May or before May. Is that correct? I will be bringing forward a report on the changes to the Municipal Elections Act and also the upcoming changes to the Municipal Act. Those, that item was not changed. However, I'll, I'll mention any items that you need to know in the time frames. For instance, if you want to add a question to the ballot, um, you had words before. So all those, I'll, I'll outline that in a report. So it, it will either come at the next meeting or, or probably in April. We do have to p uh, pass the um, voting method bylaw in May before the end of May, um, so I'm working on that as well. So I'll, I'll make sure to include those other items in the Municipal Act that speak to the composition of Council, so at least you're aware of the time frames should Council wish to proceed with any of that. Okay. Yeah, I just, it, it's just my, my thoughts. I, I would like to see it brought forward so we could have this discussion before the election because the last time the election was over and then the discussion started about the makeup. Okay, <coughs> sounds good. All right, any other uh, notices of motion? Okay, thank you. Regular council recommendation that the council of the township of Whitewater Region approve the council minutes of February 15th. 2017. Can I get a mover? Moved by Charlie Jackson, seconded by Kathy Regier. Any questions? All those in favor? Carried. Special counsel recommendation that that the council of the township of Whitewater Region approve the special council minutes of February 21, 2017. Mover, Councillor Olmstead, seconder, Dave Mackay. Any questions? All those in favor? Closed session council recommendation that the Council of the Township of Whitewater Region approve the closed session minutes of February 21st, 2017, understanding that they remain confidential. I get a mover. Moved by Dave McKay, second by uh, Councillor McLaughlin. All those in favor? Carried. Yeah, I'm going to give you 12 because you're you got to explain that. <laughs> so there's two items here. One, um, just a refusal letter. We had applied for uh, True Love for OSIF uh, funding and were rejected. I'm told by Steve this is the second time we were denied funding for that project. Um, so at budget time, we'll have to make some decisions in terms of should we proceed. Uh, there's a road component, but also a, a user pay component, so um, in terms of the underground services. The second one is um, there was an original motion from Admiston Brown Bromley asking for the OPP to provide more uh, statistics that are usable for us. That motion has since been uh, supported by Laurentian Valley and Horton, um, so there's a recommendation here to support that motion as well. Uh, in terms of OPP reporting. Um, move my Chris. Okay, but we got a, a first turn and second turn before we can discuss. Moved by Daryl McLaughlin, second by uh, Councillor Jackson, and uh, you're on. 
Um, just with respect to the first item, the refusal, uh, refusal of letter, um, it does state in the letter that staff are available to provide additional details on your project assessment. So I, I'd like to understand why that project's not getting approved. Um, that that project is vital, so it's, uh, hopefully they understand that it's not just that street that, that is impacting. That's future economic development within our region. And uh, if, you, if you read the spirit of the fund, that's what the spirit of the fund is all about. So I uh, really like to understand why we keep getting denied that particular fund. A good example, just to show how competitive it is, uh, Westport, which is kind of living, dying by, uh, they have to do their wastewater treatment plant, and they were also denied. I mean, it really has a, a bearing on whether or not they will be able to sustain themselves. So just to point out that it's a very competitive process. Um, some projects make it and some don't. Um, oftentimes, they use different criteria, but in, the, in this sense, I think it's more of a question of it's competition, right? And there's just so many projects that can be funded. Um, I can ask Steve to maybe track back with the staff person and, and see um, if there are any issues, just in terms of the next uh, application process and whether we should go forward with this project or another. Um, but I, my sense is not necessarily that it's the project has no merits. It's just the fact that it's a very competitive process and everybody's looking for money. Councillor Jackson. Who prepared the application? The application was prepared um, by our treasurer and manager with the assistance of McIntosh and Perry. So McIntosh and Perry were the engineering firm that helped us on um, kind of the project scope. Uh, so but they were involved, so, so they were involved as well. I think Sorry. they had prepared the last one as well whenever they applied for True Love, and that's why they went back again to McIntosh and Perry. And I don't believe that there was any cost to us because typically they hope that they're going to be the successful um, engineering company whenever, uh, if you get it. Um, a number of municipalities in Renfrew County were not successful, including Lawrence Valley and town of Petawawa. Um, I thought for sure that um, given the, the pointing that perhaps Whitewater Region would have been more successful than the others, but uh, I don't know. I, I agree with Councillor Olmsted. I, I would like to see a, a breakdown as to why we were not successful and, and um, it just, it's not making sense. Where was the funds located? Was it equally distributed between Ontario? Uh, is it all in southern Ontario? Is it all in northern Ontario? And the uh, region between north of Seven and North Bay gets left out again and again? I'm not quite sure, but I would like to know. So we'll follow up uh, with staff and then report back. I guess. Go ahead. Um, so to add to Charlene's point, I, I couldn't agree more with her points about uh, getting left out. Um, so I, I just come back at 5 o'clock tonight from Ogre and uh, three days of sessions. That's why my eyes look like they do now. Um, but there was a continual theme amongst the, the people that, that were attending uh, Ogre, and it was that uh, despite uh, the provincial government continually telling us that they're investing, uh, and I think I can't remember the, all the numbers now, there's so many numbers going around, but over a four year span that almost doubled the infrastructure spending. Uh, all the rural leaders that were there continually said that they could get, that they're getting cut, in fact, that they're not receiving the funds that they'd received two years ago, three years ago, five years ago. So where where is all the additional funds being spent? And everybody, of course, was pointing their finger at the at central Ontario, uh, or the center of the universe, which was the hub we were at. So um, there, there was a lot of frank discussions, you know, a lot of heated discussions at, at OGRA that you know, they're making all these announcements of funding, yet uh, we continually, not, a, lot, a lot of regions aren't seeing the same levels of funding that they'd received previously. So how can you sit there and tell us that you're doubling the fund, yet we're getting cut every year, or, or a project such as this True Love Street, which is, which is uh, vital to our community, it, it doesn't get approved. And I, I, I'll bet you if you look across Renfrew County, it's the same across Renfrew County that uh, if you benchmarked it versus other years, uh, I would bet you that Renfrew County is receiving much less funding this year than other years. 
the uh, the thing that, that that appears to be to me personally is that uh, rural Ontario gets to fund rapid transit in the cities, and uh, they just use whatever means. And at, at uh, Roma, that was the same conversation came up a lot too. As long as they don't spend money in the uh, rural areas, it seems like the, they're happy for some reason. Councillor Mackay. I was listening to a report on uh, there's going to be four cents on gas tax, and this time you don't have to have a transit. That four, the gas tax went to uh, communities with transit systems, but now they're going to be able to use it for other communities in Ontario. It's just announced two days ago. So I thought, so that's four cents of. I don't know what, how that'll come about, but that's what they announced the other day. So. Yeah. And will it happen on our budget this year? I'm going to say no. Any other questions? Back to the other motion. Yeah, Laurentian Valley OPP reporting requirements. Auckland and Jackson. Movers and seconders. Discussion. Well, uh, okay, then we're going to support them? Absolutely. Okay. All those in favor? Oh, you just want to get right on it. All right. All those in favor? Carried. Sorry. <laughs> that was a given then. Closed session. Potential land transaction. Uh, thirteen point one potential uh, and thirteen point two recruiting recruitment of manager of community services update. Recommendation that Council of the Township of Whitewater Region regain region. I'm <laughs> having a little trouble here. I just had uh, my. <laughs> My freezing is starting to come out and having trouble saying words. <laughs> anyway, Treasurer, Deputy, CAO, to discuss a potential land transaction and recruitment of manager of community services update pursuant to section 9-1 of the uh, procedural bylaw, a proposed or pending acquisition or dis disposition of land by the municipality or local board, personal matters about an in def, in def, <laughs> you read that, I can't even say it. Personal matters about an identifiable individual including municipal or local board employees at 6.35 p.m. Can I have a mover? Dave McKay, second by uh, Terry Miller. All those in favor? Carried. 